Welcome to the NCLEXP and National Council Licensure Examination (NCLEXPN). This 724 questions will help you prepare for the NCLEXPN examination. The questions are based on the categories that are included in the exam. They are similar and often identical to the actual questions that you will be asked. Each question has been researched and the answer verified. Question one: Teaching the client with gonorrhea how to prevent reinfection and further spread is an example of a primary prevention, b secondary prevention, c tertiary prevention, d primarily healthcare prevention. Answer B. Explanation. Secondary prevention targets the reduction of disease prevalence and disease morbidity through early diagnosis and treatment. Physiological adaptation. Question two. Which of the following foods is a complete protein? A. Corn. B. Eggs. C. Peanuts. D. Sunflower seeds. Answer B. Explanation. Acts are a complete protein. The remaining options are incomplete proteins. Health promotion and maintenance. Question three: Broccoli, oranges, dark greens, and dark yellow vegetables can be eaten to a supplement vitamin pills. B. Balance body molecules. C. Cure many diseases. D. Help improve body defenses. Answer D. Explanation. Controversy over what types of food to eat and not eat is still under investigation. Certain foods can help improve body defenses to possibly prevent certain diseases. Non-pharmacological therapies. Question four: The major electrolytes in the extracellular fluid are a. Potassium and chloride, b. Potassium and phosphate, c. Sodium and chloride, d. Sodium and phosphate. Answer C. Explanation: Sodium and chloride are the major electrolytes in the extracellular fluid. Physiological adaptation. Question five: Which of the following nursing diagnoses might be appropriate as Parkinson's disease progresses and complications develop? A. Impaired physical mobility. D. Dysreflexia. C. Hypothermia. D. Impaired dentition. Answer A. Explanation: The client with Parkinson's disease can develop a shuffling gait and rigidity, causing impaired physical mobility. The other diagnoses do not necessarily relate to a client with Parkinson's disease. Reduction of fixed potential. Question six: Which of the following is an inappropriate item to include in planning care for a severely neutropenic client? A. Transfuse neutrophils, granulocytes, to prevent infection. B. Exclude raw vegetables from the diet. C. Avoid administering rectal suppositories. D. Prohibit vases of fresh flowers and plants in the client's room. Answer A. Explanation: Granulocyte transfusion is not indicated to prevent infection. Produced in the bone marrow, granulocytes normally comprise seventy percent of all WBCs.
They are subdivided into three types based on staining properties: neutral fills, eosinophil fills, and base fills. They can be beneficial in a selected population of infected, severely granulocytopenic clients, less than 500 per millimeter, who do not respond to antibiotic therapy and who are expected to experience prolonged suppression of granulocyte production. Question seven: A primary relief of psychiatric mental health nursing is. A. Most people have the potential to change and grow. B. Every person is worthy of dignity and respect. C. Human needs are individual to each person. D. Some behaviors have no meaning and cannot be understood. Answer B. Explanation: Every person is worthy of dignity and respect. Every person has the potential to change and grow. All people have basic human needs in common with others. All behavior has meaning and can be understood from the client's perspective. Question eight: A teenage client is admitted to the hospital because of acetaminophen overdose. Overdoses of acetaminophen can precipitate life-threatening abnormalities in which of the following organs: a. lungs, b. liver, c. kidneys, d. adrenal glands. Answer B. Explanation: Acetaminophen is extensively metabolized in the liver. Choices one, three, and four are incorrect because prolonged use of acetaminophen might result in an increased risk of renal dysfunction. But a single overdose does not precipitate life-threatening problems in the respiratory system, renal system, or adrenal systems. Question nine: All of the following factors, when identified in the history of a family, are correlated with poverty, except a high infant mortality rate, b frequent use of emergency departments, c consultation with folk healers, d low incidence of dental problems. Answer D. Explanation: Dental problems are prevalent because of the lack of preventive care and access to care. High infant mortality is one of the most significant problems correlated with poverty. Pregnant women do not have access to care; might come to the emergency department when in labor. Those in poverty are likely to use emergency departments because they may not be turned away. Those in poverty might also turn to folk healers or other persons in their community for care who might be easier to assess and might not demand payment. Question ten: A cyclovir is the drug of choice for a HIV. B HSV one and two and VZV, C CMV, D influenza A viruses. Answer B. Acyclovir is specific for treatment of herpes virus infections. There is no cure for herpes. Acyclovir is excreted unchanged in the urine and therefore must be used cautiously in the presence of renal impairment. Drugs that treat herpes inhibit viral DNA replication by competing with viral substrates to form shorter, ineffective DNA chains. Question eleven: Ashley and her boyfriend Chris. 
both 19 years old, are transported to the emergency department after being involved in a motorcycle accident. Chris is badly hurt, but Ashley has no apparent injuries, though she appears confused and has trouble focusing on what is going on around her. She complains of dizziness and nausea. Her pulse is rapid, and she is hyperventilating. The nurse should assess Ashley's level of anxiety as a mild, b moderate, c severe, d panic. Answer C. Explanation: The person whose anxiety is assessed as severe is unable to solve problems and has a poor grasp of what's happening in his or her environment. Somatic symptoms, such as those described by Ashley, are usually present. Vital sign changes are observed. The individual with mild anxiety might report being mildly uncomfortable and might even find performance enhanced. The individual with moderate anxiety grabs less information about the situation, has some difficulty problem solving, and might have mild changes in vital signs. The individual in panic demonstrates markedly disturbed behavior and might lose touch with reality. Question twelve: Which of the following methods of contraception is able to reduce the transmission of HIV and other STDs? A. Intrauterine device (IUD). B. No plant. C. Oral contraceptives. B. Vaginal sponge. Answer D. Explanation: The vaginal sponge is a barrier method of contraception that, when used with foam or jelly contraception, reduces the transmission of HIV and other STDs as well as reducing the risk of pregnancy. IUDs, no plant, and oral contraceptives can prevent pregnancy, but not the transmission of HIV and STDs. Clients using the contraceptive methods in choices one, two, and three could should be counselled to use a chemical or barrier contraceptive to decrease transmission of HIV or STDs. Question thirteen. Which fetal heart monitor pattern can indicate cord compression? A. Variable decelerations. B. Early decelerations. C. Bradycardial. D. Tachycardial. Answer A. Explanation: Variable decelerations can be related to cord compression. The other patterns are not. Question fourteen: The nurse teaching about preventable diseases should emphasize the importance of getting the following vaccines: A. Human papilloma virus, genital herpes, measles. B. Pneumonia, HIV. Mumps. C. Syphilis, gonorrhea, pneumonia. D. Polio, pertussis, measles. Answer D. Explanation: Vaccines are one of the most effective methods of preventing and controlling certain communicable diseases. The smallpox vaccine is not currently in use because the smallpox virus has been declared eradicated from the world's population. Diseases such as polio, diphtheria, pertussis, and measles are mostly controlled by routine childhood immunization. They have not, however, been eradicated, so children need to be immunized against these diseases. Question fifteen: Which of the following conditions is mammography used to detect? A. Pain. B. Tumor. C. Edema. D. 
epilepsy. Answer B. Explanation. Mammography is used to detect tumors incised in the breast, not the other conditions. Question 16. When the nurse is determining the appropriate signs of an oropharyngeal airway to insert, what part of a client's body should be the measure? A. Corner of the mouth to the chagas of the ear. B. Corner of the eye to the top of the ear. C. Tip of the chin to the sternum. D. Tip of the nose to the earlobe. Answer A. Explanation. An oropharyngeal airway is measured from the corner of the client's mouth to the chagas of the ear. Question 17. Which sign might be the nurse see in a client with a high ammonia level? A. Coma. B. Edema. C. Hypoxia. D. Polyuria. Answer A. Explanation. Coma might be seen in a client with a high ammonia level. Question 18. What do the following ABG values indicate? pH 7.38, PO2 78 mm of mercury, PCO2 36 mm of mercury and HCO3 24 milli equivalent per litre. A. Metabolic alkalosis. B. Homeostasis. C. Respiratory acidosis. D. Respiratory alkalosis. Answer B. Explanation. These ABG values are within normal limits. Choices 1, 3 and 4 are incorrect because the ABG values indicate none of these acid-base disturbances. Question 19. Which of the following is the primary force in sex education in a child's life? A. School nurse. B. Peers. C. Parents. D. Media. Answer C. Explanation. Parents are the primary force in sex education in a child's life. The school nurse is involved with formal sex education and counselling. Peers become more important in sex education during adolescence but might lack correct information. The media play a powerful role in what children learn about sex through movies, TV and video games. Question 20. The nurse is assessing the dental status of an 18-month-old child. How many teeth should the nurse expect to examine? A. 6 B. 8 C. 12 D. 16 Answer C. Explanation. In general, children begin dentition around six months of age. During the first two years of life, a quick guide to the number of teeth a child should have is as follows. Subtract the number six from the number of months in the age of the child. In this example, the child is 18 months old, so the formula is 18 minus 6 equal 12. An 18-month-old child should have approximately 12 teeth. Question 21. Which of the following medications is a serotonin antagonist that might be used to relieve nausea and vomiting? A. Metoclopramide B. Ondansetron C. Hydroxazine D. Prochlorparazin
plans B explanation, Zofran is a serotonin antagonist that can be used to relieve nausea and vomiting. The other medications can be used for nausea and vomiting, but they have different mechanisms of action. Question 22. A client is complaining of difficulty walking secondary to a mass in the foot. The nurse should document this finding as A. Plantar fasciitis B. Hallux valgus C. Hematone D. Morton's neuroma Answer D. Explanation. Morton's neuroma is a small mass of tumor in a digital nerve of the foot. Hallux valgus is referred to in lay terms as a budion. Hamatone is where one toe is cocked up over another toe. Plantar fasciitis is an inflammation of or pain in the arch of the foot. Question 23. For a client with suspected appendicitis, the nurse should expect to find abdominal tenderness in which quadrant? A. Upper right, B. Upper left, C. Lower right, D. Lower left. Answer C. Explanation. The nurse should expect to find abdominal tenderness in the lower right quadrant in a client appendicitis. Question 24. Assessment of a client with a cast should include A. Capillary refill worm toes, no discomfort. B. Posterior tibial pauses, worm toes. C. Moist skin essential pain threshold. D. Discomfort of the metal carpals. Answer A. Explanation. Assessment for adequate circulation is necessary. Signs of impaired circulation include slow capillary refill, cold fingers or toes, and pain. Question 25. Which of the following injuries, if demonstrated by a client entering the emergency department, is the highest priority? A. Open leg fracture. B. Open head injury. C. Stab wound to the chest. D. Traumatic amputation of a thumb. Answer C. Explanation. A stab wound to the chest might result in lung collapse and media astinal shift that, if untreated, could lead to death. Treatment of an obstructed airway to a chest wound is a higher priority than hemorrhage. The principle of ABC, airway, breathing and circulation, prioritizes care decisions. Question 26. Why must the nurse be careful not to cut through or disrupt any tears, holes, blood stains, or dirt present on the clothing of a client who has experienced trauma? A. The clothing is the property of another and must be treated with care. B. Such care facilities repair and salvage of the clothing. C. The clothing of a trauma victim is potential evidence with legal implications. D. Such care decreases trauma to the family members receiving the clothing. Answer C. Explanation. Trauma in any client, living or dead, has potential legal and or forensic implications. Clothing patterns of stains or debris are sources of potential evidence and must be preserved. Nurses must be aware of state and local regulations that require mandatory reporting of cases of suspected child and elder abuse, accidental death and suicide. 
Each emergency department has written policies and procedures to assist nurses and other health care providers in making appropriate reports. Physical evidence is real, tangible or latent matter that can be visualized, measured or analyzed. Emergency department nurses can be called on to collect evidence. Health care facilities have policies governing the collection of forensic evidence. The chain of evidence custody must be followed to ensure the integrity and credibility of the evidence. The chain of evidence custody is the pathway that evidence follows from the time it is collected until it has served its purpose in the legal investigation of an incident. Question 27. Which of the following statements, if made by the parents of a newborn, does not indicate a need for further teaching about court care? A. I should put alcohol on my baby's cot three to four times a day. B. I should put the baby's diaper on so that it covers the cot. C. I should call the physician if the cot becomes dark. D. I should wash my hands before and after I take care of the cot. Answer D. Explanation. Parents should be taught to wash their hands before and after providing court care. This prevents transferring pathogens to and from the court. Folding the diaper below the court exposes the court to air and allows for dyeing. It also prevents wet or soiled diapers from coming into contact with the court. Current recommendations include cleaning the area around the court 34 times a day with a cotton swab, but do not include putting alcohol or other antimicrobials on the cot. It is normal for the cot to turn dark as it dries. Question 28. A middle-aged woman tells the nurse that she has been experiencing irregular menses for the past six months. The nurse should assess the woman for other symptoms of a. Climacteric B. Menopause C. Perimenopause D. Postmenopause Answer C. Explanation Perimenopause refers to a period of time in which hormone changes occur gradually, ovarian function diminishes, and menses become irregular. Perimenopause lasts approximately five years. Climacteric is a term applied to the period of life in which physiologic changes occur and result in cessation of a woman's reproductive ability and lessen sexual activity in males. The term applies to both genders. Climacteric and menopause are interchangeable terms when used for females. Menopause is the period when permanent cessation of menses has occurred. Postmenopause refers to the period after the changes accompanying menopause are complete. Question 29. Which of the following might be an appropriate nursing diagnosis for an epileptic client? A. Dysreflexia B. Risk for injury C. Urinary retention D. Unbalanced nutrition Answer B. Explanation. The epileptic client is at risk for injury due to the complications of seizure activity, such as possible head trauma associated with a fall. The other choices are not related to the question. Question 30. Which of the following diseases or conditions is least likely to be associated with increased potential for bleeding? A. Metastatic liver cancer B. Gram-negative septicemia C. Pernicious anemia D. Iron deficiency anemia
vitamins C explanation. Pernicious anemia results from vitamin B12 deficiency due to lack of intrinsic factor. This can result from inadequate dietary intake, faulty absorption from the GI tract due to a lack of secretion of intrinsic factor normally produced by gastric mucosal cells and certain disorders of the small intestine that impair absorption. The nurse should instruct the client in the need for lifelong replacement of vitamin B12, as well as the need for folic acid, rest, diet and support. Thank you for watching.